in episode one of uh, Dial the Gate, I teased that you had told me something uh, during one of our previous conversations that was very um, uh, interesting in terms of a direction that the show may have gone. The last time that we see him, he's standing in front of an exploding city. And we hear a message sent to Earth that, you know, the, the Tolan are leaving the, the system and ships and they're being knocked out of the sky. Right. I just want and you to know that dot, dot, dot. And then it, exactly. Yeah. And then you revealed that there was more that had been planned. Can you please yeah. share that yeah. with everyone? Well, at least in um, terms of what you knew. Well, I, I went to the uh, 100th episode party and uh, it was fun. There was, they, they invited people that had been involved with the show to the 100th episode party. It was a big deal. We all got little packages, a little bag with a small Stargate in it with the pictures of the cast. We got, um, oh, a, a bunch of little prezzies that were all, oh, a, a copy of the 100th episode, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So I thought, oh, gee, someday I'll auction this off with my script from the episode and make hundreds. But I mean, <laughs> <laughs> Um, but anyway, we're sitting there talking and the producers came up and were saying, oh, by the way, just so you know, we're, um, thinking of having Narin come back as a Goa old. And I went, what a great arc. I would absolutely love to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm already working on my flange. Yeah. <laughs> So I went, oh, this would be something. I said, that would be tremendous. And But it never happened. So they just never got around to it. They decided not to do it. But, uh, and I believe I heard from you that in one of the books or the cartoons or the story they actually did, it was the Pacna they put in me? It was Chloral. Oh, Chloral. Fittingly enough. Yeah. Oh, of course. Yeah. Right. Nareem, yeah, yeah. Chlorel had uh, had a bone to pick with the Tolan, and he picked Nareem, knowing that that Earth, uh, that he was the closest to Earth. So right. that actually makes a lot of sense. Yeah. So. No, I would have loved to. Have, I would have loved to have had the cat walk through the gate. <laughs> I walk through the gate, and Amanda goes, Nareem, and I go, Amanda. <laughs> <laughs> Samantha. <laughs> yes, of course. So it would have been great fun, but uh, it never happened. But I thought that would have been because the thing about that character was in the first episode, I decided to make him very gentle, very, I call him milk toast. You know, he really was a milk toast and nonviolent and completely just honorable and, and full of integrity and, and, and such a um, antithesis of a, the macho man. Mm hmm. And then the second episode, did I? I, uh, <laughs> I say, well, basically, I was the butler. <laughs> Come this way. <laughs> Come this way. I'm <laughs> just because uh, it was the trial, not the try all. Try ad. Yeah, I know. Uh, <laughs> no, um, my, Michael Shanks goes um, the try all. The try. <laughs> so it's kind of like a trial. I'm he unfamiliar said, with the term. Like, this is like a tri oh. Anyway, uh, that became my name for triad after that. Uh, but um, that whole um, episode was, it didn't, my character didn't really grow at all. There was no, you know, there was, uh, they'd set it up and we moved forward from there. Uh, but in the last episode, mm. the, uh, I'd been filming for about three days, I think. And the producers we were sitting there talking, I believe it was Michael Greenberg. Michael yeah. said, well, you know, we were a little worried, Garwin, um, because this is the largest guest star we've ever written up to this point. And you kind of drive this episode along in many places, because most of the time the guest stars show that the team is there i was involved in a lot of scenes in it and they said and you kind of drive this engine a bit and we were a little concerned but he's such a milk toast it's just going to be what's going to happen and of course what happened for him at the point i i understood that as an actor that i can't do that i had to step up and move forward and make it more dynamic but after three days they said they had the courage to say to me then he said well but we should have known you're doing just keep doing what you're doing we're really happy Absolutely. So, He's completely so blindsided was, throughout this episode. And even O'Neill says, would you get your head out of your ass? Yes. 
Yes. Because I can't believe we we're so honorable. It's against everything of our culture to do this piece of this betrayal. This this uh, it's so traitorous. Uh, you can't even conceive of it. It's not even in our language. This type of thing could exist. Since we had that issue with killing off other people because we gave them technology, we had been really, really careful about stuff like this. So anyway, that was, um, for me, it was um, the nice arc for the character at this point. But to take that one extra step would have been astounding, to take him all the way to uh, the antithesis of who he was in the first episode. You know, having Chlorella especially inside of him would have been, holy cow. So I, I, I regret that that never happened because it would have been a complete arc. I love those arcs. There's a movie called uh, Les Enfants du Paradis by Marcel Kahn. It's a French uh, movie made during the occupation in the, in the Second World War. Uh, and um, it's a story where the characters at the beginning, Baptiste and Florence and Gérance and somebody else, those characters start off as one way and within the arc of the show, almost all of them except for two, become the antithesis of the character at the beginning of the show. Tremendous character arcs. It's one of the best movies I've ever seen. So I recommend it to anybody. Uh, Children of Paradise is the English version. Children of Paradise. Show. War does that to people. Yeah. So, um, well, this is what, I, that movie was, I could go on about that movie. It's, mm. It was filmed during the occupation secretly. They did it. The Germans wouldn't be allowed them to do this. How they got away with this, I have no idea. They shot this film while Germany occupied France. And for me, the movie is Garance, who is the main character. She's the female lead, one of the leads. She is France. And that's what's happening around them is, uh, it's a great story on its own, but there's so much symbolism about what's happening to France and how the people are changing to deal with the occupation and what's happened to them. Anyway, blah, 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 blah. No, no, I think that's valid. So yeah. the other the other thing about Nareem, um, that always uh, stands out to people, especially with that character. Not only is he the one that is, I mean, in, to, to borrow from what you're saying, he is he is Tol he is Tolana. Um, the other part of that is he's still damned arrogant, just like all of them. This cannot be happening. Our technology is impenetrable. We are we are technologically better than all of you put together. And it blindsides him when he realizes that the Curia, their government has been lying to them and all the chips are down and everything that he has stood for is gone. So, you know what, why not take one of our weapons and point it at a building and blow it up, knowing that everything inside of it is exactly what we do not stand for. Weapons of mass destruction. Yeah. yeah. What an arc. Uh, yeah, exactly. I really, I, and I was very happy with that ending. Uh, you know, he does, he could have escaped. But he said, well, I, I'm the one who did this. So I push the button. People to at least stay and die with them or whatever. It's going to happen, but I'm not about to abandon them. So, you know, uh, that's uh, it was a very satisfying ending for that character. I felt. Thanks for watching this clip from Dial the Gate. You can find the full live stream shows on our YouTube channel or visit dialthegate.com for the complete schedule. See you on the other side.